what is going on everyone welcome back to another swift tutorial today we're going to be taking a look at how you can integrate a spreadsheet view like the one you see here uh, into your apps so we're going to take a look at how to set this up the very basics of it how to get data into here via the data source customizing it labels colors all that good stuff using the delegate so on and so forth uh, so you might be wondering what you can use this component for. So obviously you can use it like a standard spreadsheet. You can also use it to build a uh, schedule or a calendar or something that utilizes these uh, cells in this layout in this format. So that said, uh, hit that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Helps me make more videos for all of you. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Subscribe. Get Xcode ready. Get excited. And let's absolutely finally jump right into it. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. Let's begin by creating a new project. We're gonna stick with a single view application template and let's call this my spreadsheet view save it to our desktop, and let's jump right in. So the first thing we wanna do is bring in the component framework that lets us create this spreadsheet. So we're gonna do that with CocoaPods. So open up terminal, cd into your project folder, and run pod in it. And once this returns, we can open up the newly created pod file. And the framework that we want to bring in is called spreadsheet view. So let's bring that in capital V lowercase the P save and close text edit. And now we can run pod install. And if you're not familiar with Cocoa pods, I've got a separate video on this. So take a look at that. Uh, but once we have successfully installed it, we'll see this line here. So we can now close this Xcode window and open up the workspace by typing open project name dot XE workspace. Cool. Okay. So let's uh, expand our Xcode window first before we start implementing anything. And the first thing we're going to want to do is hit command R to build and run to our simulator. And you'll notice uh, that you're going to get some errors right off the bat. So once we start building, we see we got some errors and let's actually look at them by clicking on this and then filtering out all the warnings and we'll just be left with the errors. So let's go back to the errors. So sometimes when you install CocoaPods or a pod through CocoaPods, it might be outdated. It might be using an older function name for an older Swift version. So something that I wanted to go over in this video also was how to fix this. So if we click on any of these, we'll see that it tells us what the error is here. And most of these errors, actually all of these errors can be fixed by just hitting the error and clicking fix. So it can convert the function to the newer function for the new language version. So we can actually hit fix for all of these. The first thing it'll ask uh, for each file is if we want to unlock it to edit. Let's do that. Let's hit fix for all of these also. So something to keep in mind is you can go through and edit all of this yourself and it'll make your project work. But keep in mind when you go and run pod update or pod install again, the file here that we're editing will be overwritten. Man, I really can't click this fix button today, can I? Um, but the file will be overwritten. So if you go and update this version, just be cognizant of what command you're running. So let's also fix these. Let's unlock the file. 
And I think we got two more here. Fix that one, that one. And now all our errors are gone. Let's go back to our view controller. Now let's hit Command R. And fingers crossed, we should successfully build and see our empty app here. So this is a common issue that you might run into with using pods. So that's how you fix it. Now let's actually get into the spreadsheet. So let's implement a basic one and then we'll look at customization, um, the grid lines, sizing, all that jazz. So to start, we want to import the framework. So spreadsheet view. Now you can use the storyboard to create an outlet and connect it for a spreadsheet view like so. And let me spell this correctly. Basically, you can connect this in the storyboard. Uh, you just need to update the class. We're going to create this in code uh, just for the sake of uh, an easier example to visualize. So let's get rid of the outlet and let's create a private let spread sheet view is going to be a spread sheet view and not the delegate, we just want the view. In view to load, let's simply add this as a sub view, like so. Let's override view uh, did layout sub views, call super for it. And then here we'll give this guy a, a frame. So spreadsheet view dot frame. And let's do CG rect x, y width and height, 0, 100, view dot frame dot size dot width, and view dot frame dot size dot height minus 100 for the top buffer. And before we can run it and see our empty spreadsheet, we also need to implement a data source for the spreadsheet. So let's do that by assigning its data source to be self and conforming to said data source. So that's a spread sheet view data source. And there are four functions we need that the, the data source requires. First one is number of columns. So let's say 300. Number of rows, let's say 200. Um, with for column, we're going to say 200 and height for row, we'll say 55. So once you have these four functions implemented, if you had an error up here about the data source not being conformed to, it should go away. We can hit command R to build and run. And we have our uh, spreadsheet here. So I keep calling this a spreadsheet because that's I guess what it is uh, at the very bare minimum, and that's what the framework is called too. But you can imagine you can use this type of component to do a bunch of different UI things, right? So if you wanted to create a calendar or a schedule, you can do so using this type of user interface. So now let's take a look at how we can customize a little bit of it, the delegate, and how we can actually populate stuff into these cells which arguably is the most important thing. So we can customize things on here, um, such as the grid style, and we can have none, or we can have a solid grid style with a width of one point for the lines, and we're gonna have a link colored blue line for the grid. Uh, we can also assign the delegate to self and we must conform to said delegate up here. So spread sheet view delegate. And if we click into this, you'll see there are quite a few uh, functions that the delegate provides for us, such as uh, should highlight, did highlight, should select, did select, etc., etc. And they're pretty well documented here. Um, point being, you can get all of the event interactions. So for example, if we override should highlight, this one uh, expects a Boolean to be returned. So we'll just return true. So if we just run this, 
we should see our blue grid like so. And let's actually put stuff in these cells. So I'm sure you've noticed the way that this component is architected is very similar to table views and collection views, where we have a data source, a delegate, we provide the content, uh, very similar to that. There is also a uh, function, I believe it's called, let's put it down here. I believe it's called cell for row. Um, not this one, let's see, spread sheet view. We want spreadsheet view cell for item. That's what it is, not row. So basically in this function, we can dequeue and return uh, a cell. So before we do that, we need to create a cell as well as register it. So this framework provides a class called cell. Uh, it's simply called cell capital C. And we're gonna create a subclass of it called my label cell. It'll inherit cell. And as the name of the class implies, we're gonna just put a label in the cell. By default, this class, let's actually click into it so you guys can all see it. Uh, by default, there are no um, UI labels or images or anything in this cell. It's basically just a very bare bones grid cell. So we're gonna create a subclass here and we're gonna create a private uh, label. It'll be a UI label. We're gonna have a public function called setup with text. And as you can probably guess, we're gonna assign that text to our label. We'll also center the text. And let's of course make sure we add the label to the content view. We also want to override layout subviews, call super for this, and we're going to say label.frame equals content view.bounds, basically making the label take up the entirety of the cell's content area. And let us also create a static identifier on here. We're going to use this identifier to register the cell to our spreadsheet. And let's do that registration by saying spreadsheet view register. And we want to register a class. So our class.self and the identifier is the class dot the identifier property we added. And in this function, now we can say let cell equals spreadsheet view and we want to dequeue a cell with the identifier for index path and that index path has a section in a row similar to a table view but the difference is a section refers to a column and the rows refer to the the given row um, the given row of cells let's make sure to cast it as our cell and now we can call cell our setup function. Let's just call this hello to begin with. And let's return cell. So now if you run it, you should see that this text is in all of our cells. So all of our columns, all of our rows, we can scroll through uh, as many rows as we provided via these functions. Um, same for the columns. So that's how you can basically add stuff to a cell. Now let's take a look at a little more uh, practical of an example. So let's say we wanted to create uh, a very basic schedule or calendar and we wanted columns to represent a day. So we're gonna create an array called data and this is gonna have days in it. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I feel like I always spell that wrong, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, which is my favorite, and Sunday. So basically for number of columns, we don't want to return this arbitrary number we want to return the number of things in data. And uh, for this function, 
for the actual cell being returned, if you recall, I mentioned that the section uh, is for the column and the row off of the index path is for the given row. So we only want to show um, the, the name of the day in the first column and we want to go through the rows as they increment. So let's see how we can do that. So we're going to basically say if index path dot section is zero, so first column, we can say uh, cell dot setup with, oh, actually, you know what? I made a mistake. So number of columns should go back to being what it was. And what we want to change is number of rows because rows are the ones going vertically. So we're going to say if the column is zero, we're in the first column, we're going to set up with the given row in data, which should point to our day. And what we'll also do is we will say the cells uh, background color is, let's say system green. Hopefully I didn't mix up rows and columns there. And if you look at this, we have our uh, names of the days and they're all set up to be these green. It's the first column. And the rest of these are just our hello. And let's see where that's coming from. The reason it's showing up uh, that in here is because we have the setup here. So what we can do is get rid of this and we can say cell dot setup with enter task. For example, if this was a schedule for tasks we need to complete. We've got our day and we've got these cells here. Now, if you take a look, it looks like it's repeating. So the reason it's doing that is because we're dequeuing the cell uh, every time and we should really be resetting uh, and prepare for reuse the cell background color and the cell text. So I won't get too much into the weeds of that, but that's basically how you can set up a spreadsheet view. It's a very powerful component, as you can see here, with the variety of things we can do uh, with fairly minimal code. And you can, of course, have a variety of different custom cells you can register to do a bunch of different uh, UI layouts. That said, if you haven't smashed that like button down below, please make sure you do so. If you have any comments, questions, errors, uh, throw them in the comments down below. I reply to every comment uh, within a day or two. Uh, if you're new and enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button for daily Swift tutorials. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.